Knuckles, you dope. You got fooled by Eggman again? Sonic, it's not what it looks like. We've given Knuckles a lot of crap for this over the years, but I would say there is a bit of Knuckles in a lot of us, and that makes him relatable. Not in the sense that we've guarded a treasure our whole lives or anything, but there are some similarities that possibly hit closer to home than we would like to admit. That being said, I'd say that Knuckles definitely is not a dope. But if that's the case, then what does that imply? Well, it implies quite a few things along with what we've learned from our rougher than the rest of them echidna. Let's take a look at three separate circumstances that relate to the theme at hand. Knuckles debut game, Sonic and Knuckles, Sonic Adventure, and Sonic Advance 2. And let's just have some fun along the way and also say that I'd like to argue that Sonic and Knuckles was Knuckles' first and only time being tricked by Eggman. This is what you learned from Knuckles the Echidna. Here I come, rougher than the rest of them, the best of them, tougher than leather. You can call me Knuckles, unlike Sonic I don't chuckle. I'd rather flex my muscles, I'm hard as nails, it ain't hard to tell, I break them down whether they solid or frail, unlike the rest, I'm independent since my first breath, first test, feel the right, then the worst left. Born on an island, in the heavens, the blood of my ancestors flows inside me, my duty is to save the flower. Now, just as a warning beforehand, if you're someone who's like, I don't like this, games are my escape. <laughs> Sorry, that's just how I sound when I complain, so that's just me projecting. But seriously, if you like to keep video games in a certain space because you find that they are your place of escape, this specific video series might not be for you. I'm very much more likely to linger on real life topics here, and I would say that games are there for that reason of escape, but I don't know. Games like Celeste exist, right? But anyhow, just know that if that's the case for you, this may not be for you. Which isn't a bad thing, just that not everything is for everyone. And I get it, games where you're having fun in real life usually don't correlate. But for me, I often can't help thinking about how most things relate to real life. But there's a time and place for everything. But anyhow, this is just a warning because I'm not going to try tricking you into watching the whole video. Knuckles the Echidna debuted in Sonic and Knuckles. He is our antagonist of the game, or at least one of them as he gets in our way and tries his darndest to stunt our progress. Which is a little different from the norm since that's usually Eggman's job. But now we've got this knucklehead getting in our way. And he has a bit of snarkiness to him as he laughs at you. Which gives us the impression that he's a sniving, conniving little dastardly devil who seems like they just want to get in our way for the sake of it. However, later we realize that he's been tricked and that his sinister plots to get in our way were only carried out because he genuinely thought that we were going to take something important of his. But instead, the one who did so was actually someone he didn't expect up to this point. Now earlier I stated Knuckles is not a dope. If not, then what does that imply? There are other factors at play outside of being a dope. What factors? Well, let's break down what contributed to the situation and to why Knuckles was tricked. We know that the subject at hand has to do with Knuckles being told that Sonic is after the Emeralds and the Master Emerald, and we know that protecting the Master Emerald is important to him. This tells us, one, his heart is invested in the situation at hand, making for emotional weight. And two, obviously misinformation, which is wrenched in to confuse the party. These being key outside factors that play a part. There are two other inside factors from Knuckles himself, but we'll touch on those later. Already, Knuckles has a lot going against him. The emotional weight involved, which is something I think we can all understand, right? When is it that we usually become invested in investigating a potential true or false narrative? It's most likely when we care about the subject. 
Someone might tell you that Jimmy went into your cookies yesterday, and even if you had no reason to believe that he'd ever do that, what do you do? You go check anyways. As compared to someone telling you that Jimmy ate all of the celery, like, I mean, who's gonna care? You might not even give it a second thought. For Knuckles, keeping the Master Emerald safe was his emotional weight. Of course he was going to become invested after hearing that what he cared about was in jeopardy, even if it may have seemed illogical. But unfortunately for Knuckles, he found himself in a situation that made it seem as though it was logical, because he didn't know Eggman or Sonic. And in these turn of events, Knuckles' idea of what was logical had cemented itself in stone because he had little reason to distrust Eggman, but also no reason to trust Sonic, especially when he catches Sonic heading towards his island at breakneck speeds, using the emeralds just as Eggman's false notion portrayed him to be doing. And that's where misinformation's wrench was thrown in. The notion Eggman gives is most certainly false, but the only thing about this notion is that there is some truth intertwined in it. At this point, Knuckles has more information against Sonic than for him. And what a relatable wombo combo that is. People who fall for scams find themselves in similar situations, something that they care about, like money for instance. People want to be able to feel like they can live comfortably and they feel money can do that. They also want to take care of themselves and provide for their families, or they might just be lazy and want to live an easy life. Either way, it's still something that tugs on their heart to the point where even if something seems illogical, they may still go with the idea. As far as Sonic Adventure goes, something similar happens for Knuckles here along with more implications that can be thought about if he actually isn't a dope. And like I've mentioned before, I argue that Knuckles' debut game is the first and only time he was truly tricked by Eggman. And the reason I thought it would be fun to talk about this along the way was because I haven't seen too many people touch on this about Knuckles in detail. There's definitely more there than just what appears to be on the surface, and I just don't believe Knuckles just blindingly believes Eggman at the drop of a hat. This most certainly isn't bound to change the minds of anyone who actually believe Knuckles is a dope, but still a fun topic to entertain nonetheless. So what exactly happens here? This time the Master Emerald is actually shattered to pieces as two forms emerge from it, a less than ambiguous to call and one of our main baddies, Chaos. And before Knuckles can even make out what's happened, Chaos gives him the alley-oop. He then realizes what has happened, Chaos takes his leave and Angel Island begins to fall. After which, Knuckles determines search for the pieces of the Master Emerald to begin. After some success, he runs into Eggman, who has something in his hand. Something shiny, might I add. And this is actually a great time to weigh in on those inside factors I mentioned earlier. One of those being... What's up, Knuckles? A quick temper, aka my deductive reasoning only bears fruit equaling to the value of 0.02 seconds worth, generally associated with less likely thinking things through. And then we have... Eggman, give me back the Master Emerald. N Knuckles! Oh, this isn't what you're after! You're right. Lack of information, not being able to attain a full grasp of the situation, which was something that played a part earlier in Sonic and Knuckles, but both of these factors are seen in Sonic Adventure very clearly. Earlier, we aren't necessarily exposed to this personality trait from Knuckles or how he personally lacks information in real time because there is no talking in Sonic and Knuckles, as it was a show-no-tell narrative that was given to us, just like the other classic games. Here, we are able to make this deduction of his character in about the same amount of time that it takes Knuckles to realize that what Eggman is holding is a piece of the Master Emerald. Dr. Eggman! What's he got there? It's gotta be a part of the Master Emerald! Hold on! Come back here! Yep, right here. It is unfortunate, but at the very least, he does something right here, which I'll come back to later. First, we gotta get that Master Emerald piece back from him, and... Yeah, yeah, that's still 
doesn't phase me. You hear? I know something that might. It's about Sonic. What? What about Sonic? He's after the pieces of the Master Emerald too. What do you mean? Well, I guess that's too bad. It wasn't a Master Emerald piece, but we now get a startling revelation about our buddy Sonic. You're not the only one on a wild chase, idiot. Why should I ruin your surprise? <laughs> by that. I'd better find Sonic. I wonder why Sonic is after the Master Emerald. I'd better work fast and get to the bottom of this. At least here, Knuckles is skeptical. After all, the circumstances are a little reversed now. Knuckles has reason to trust Sonic and no reason to trust Eggman. However, there's still something that plays a part here. The subject in question having great importance to Knuckles himself. That emotional weight thing I kept talking about earlier. After all, this is his mission, his responsibility, so this dastardly factor plays another role here even with the circumstances reversed. At the very least, my hat goes off to Knuckles at this point because he does something that shows that he isn't just outright believing Eggman. There's Sonic! Man was right. What's that in his hand? It looks like a piece of the Master Emerald. He has no right to have that. Hey, Knuckles! Whoa! What do you think you're doing? All right. Put him up. Hand over the emerald now. That's not gonna happen, buddy! Well, I didn't say what he did was going to work, but this is one reason why I say Knuckles wasn't tricked beyond his debut. He goes to investigate to see for himself. This alone, though, doesn't put Eggman's plan to a halt because Knuckles and Sonic still react the same way he expects them to. Eggman bets on Knuckles also mistaking the emeralds in Sonic's possession as master emerald pieces, so there's that misinformation with truth sprinkled in again. Eggman definitely told the boldface lie. Sonic wasn't looking for the master emerald pieces, but he was looking for the chaos emeralds. And for Knuckles, all that had to take place for him was to see some semblance of it looking like Sonic was collecting the master emerald pieces. An unfortunate outcome, but at least he actually went to scope out the situation for himself before coming to conclusions. Maybe at this point you could argue that he shouldn't even have to investigate since at this point he should already trust Sonic. However, we have to remember that the presence of an emotional weight item is the subject at hand. Guarding the Master Emerald is his duty, and retrieving the pieces is something he feels is his responsibility, so the feeling that he has to investigate is only normal. Just also unfortunate because, yes, he did at least investigate, however, that's all he did. There was no, hey Sonic, what you got there? Or, hey Sonic, are you after the pieces of the Master Emerald? Not a single effort of chit chat was ever initiated. Not to mention, Knuckles just says, All right. Put him up. Hand over the emerald now. Like, did you just suddenly care to give the Master Emerald a nickname at this very point in time? And Sonic has some blame here too. He doesn't ask Knuckles anything. He's just like, That's not gonna happen, buddy. Well, actually, from Sonic's perspective, he does ask, Something bugging you? But that's it. No, hey Knuckles, what you need them for, or anything like that. Nevertheless, Eggman expected that reaction from both of them, which is funny because as much as Sonic and Knuckles differ in their almost polar opposite personalities, they both handle certain situations very similarly. They react first, whether it be with hot-headed fist or impulsive speed, which makes for a demographic that doesn't always work well together and can be easier to predict. It was at least a step in the right direction to investigate, but 
oh well. Regardless, this is another reason why I say that Knuckles was not tricked here. The situation with Sonic very much played out in the same fashion concerning Knuckles' encounter with Eggman. It's just that Eggman exploited that observation and made a bet on the fact that he might react the same way in another scenario. And the outcome of said scenario played out due to poor timing from witnessing Sonic collecting Chaos Emeralds and because of Knuckles' lack of asking questions. Which was further expedited because Sonic also didn't go beyond the surface and talk it out. He just took the situation at face value and simply took on Knuckles' gesture to square up. You could technically say that Eggman tricked them because his plan succeeded, but they weren't fooled by Eggman. I'm 99% certain that if Knuckles ran into Sonic without Eggman giving him the idea to do so, he would have suspected Sonic had a Master Emerald piece at the very shimmer of a sparkle and would have fallen short due to his own shortcomings. And sometimes that happens to the best of us, right? Sometimes we jump the gun and get ahead of ourselves, thinking that what we've seen is all that needs to be seen. Maybe that calls for a bit of humility, but it's only natural to get riled up about what's important to us or what we're passionate about. It might just take a little extra effort and stepping back a bit to avoid having those things used against us by others or even ourselves, but yeah. But what if we are just straight up gullible? Oof. This one is gonna be hard to argue, but there's still hope for you yet, Knuckles. I hope. So what happened here? Oh boy. As per usual, Sonic has gotta go fasting and blasting through Leaf Forest with some spectacle speed to not only find Eggman Batniks along the way, but also a polite girl, later known to us as Cream the Rabbit, captured by a machine built by Eggman. And later, we find Tails in a similar predicament as well over a musical plant. By the time we've made our way through Sky Canyon, we see a, shall we say, interesting sight. <laughs> Oh what? Knuckles was captured too? Wait, what is he doing? Is he actually controlling that thing? Well, just because it's you doesn't mean we have a problem with defeating you. What? You came at me first! You just couldn't give me anything good to work with here, could you, Knuckles? At this point, we could just come to believe that Knuckles is gullible, and for good reason. But I think that this led the developers to simply include it for laughs, especially in one of their titles that was very simple in story. And maybe they couldn't think of a way to make it believable that Knuckles would actually get captured, so they just chopped it up to Knuckles being tricked and put him in one of Eggman's robots for the sake of keeping boss fights consistent. I wasn't even going to include this instance as a situation to argue my interesting claim because of everything I've mentioned thus far concerning this game, but where's the fun in that? With all of that in mind, all of what I'm about to say is heavy speculation because the game itself doesn't give us much to go on, so pardon the extremely unnecessary detour to defend the echidna. I think he's my favorite character or something with how far I'm taking this. This is how things go down. The strangest thing just happened, but Sonic doesn't care what reason he has, so he cuts short his explanation. Then Knuckles says, I'll get Eggman for this. So all we know is that something strange happened and that Knuckles' attack on Sonic was influenced by Eggman. For all we know, a similar situation with Sonic Adventure could have played out here, but I'm not going to heavily rely on that as my explanation. However, let's just say for the moment that this is the case. Sonic is in Sky Canyon, a place dwelling in the clouds. Maybe Sky Canyon is close to Angel Island. It wouldn't be out of the ordinary for Eggman to tell another boldface lie that only seemed to ring true because Knuckles caught Sonic in the act of presumably heading towards the Master Emerald. And with all of those factors mentioned earlier that played a part in the previous games, conveniently contributing to the situation. Because we know how passionate Knuckles is about what's important to him and how quickly he jumps to conclusions, which leads to not not taking a look at logic whatsoever beyond what's on the surface, hence it could have played out that way. However, let's take a different approach. 
There are some things that I've yet to dwell on that definitely play a part in how Knuckles interacts with others, and that has to do with most of his life being spent in solidarity. He spent most of his time alone, so what a sudden social change to go through when there's suddenly people who are different from Knuckles in almost every way crashing into his life. This may bring the question, how does someone in that situation react? Of course, not everyone would think the same way since personalities exist. However, the main thing that anyone in Knuckles' situation would have against them is lack of mistreatment. That's definitely interesting for something like that to be considered a bad thing in this situation. You yourself have never had anyone come at you with ill intent, nor have you ever had ill intent towards someone else. Your first reaction to someone telling you that someone is after something important to you isn't to blow them off. Not on a first offense, anyhow. But Eggman's first offense isn't the only time his influence leads Knuckles into similar situations now, is it? So what's the issue here? Well, of course, I've mentioned the emotional weight item many times. Still plays a big part, especially for Knuckles concerning who he is. All Knuckles cares about is what he's cared about for the longest time. Most of the time, it doesn't even matter to him that Eggman is bad news. His priorities are just very much in a different place. But he's also very straightforward and genuine and he has a good heart. And all of this, along with his previous life of solidarity, caused him to be gullible at times, which can be a recipe for disaster, even more so in our own world. To be honest though, that doesn't sound too bad. Not constantly being weighed down with the thought of, can I trust this person? I'm sure we all want to be able to trust others, and I feel it's okay to do so. There's no point in wasting our energy on actively distrusting others and disturbing our own inner peace with unsettling thoughts. If anything, we can take a lesson from our lovable knucklehead and do our own research that goes beyond just what our eyes can see. But you know, this kind of sucks. Because at this point, I don't even think I can really argue for Knuckles here. I suppose you could say that his inclusion in Sonic Advance 2 was merely shoved in there the way that it was, just for the sake of having him in the game and story, but I just really wish they would have given us a little more to go on here. Because there's more to Knuckles than just what's shown here, as we've clearly seen. To me, Knuckles was only tricked the one time. His actions show us where his thought patterns go, and he wouldn't have just straight up believed Eggman without some type of proof that he could seemingly see for himself. The actions of someone who tries to reason and go investigate to see for themselves isn't someone who I'd say blindly believes what someone else says. And who knows, maybe there's more there as well concerning the actions of someone and what they imply. I haven't touched on it much because it's pretty out there, but Knuckles and Sonic started out as rivals and I like to think that their rivalry is still there. I mentioned earlier how their personalities were, more or less, polar opposites, but maybe that's something that Knuckles is a little envious of. Sonic's carefree attitude and that nothing bounds him down. And maybe Knuckles' actions here in Sonic Advance 2 showcase that. Maybe hearing that Sonic is involved puts Knuckles to action because of that rivalry, or because of those possibly hidden deep-seated envious feelings for Sonic's carefree nature. Maybe Sonic irritates him for that reason at times. I know that we don't see much of Knuckles at his post too much after these games, but that's what I think Knuckles felt in these earlier titles when bound to the Master Emerald. Yeah, after all this, you'd think he was my favorite character or something. But overall, is Knuckles dope? Nah. Just someone who's learning the ropes of being around people, who holds keeping the Master Emerald safe in high regard, is as straightforward and genuine as it gets, and a knucklehead with a good heart. And I think a lot of us can probably relate to Knuckles. Sometimes we just make mistakes, but don't feel bad if others harp on you about why you might have trusted someone or fallen for someone else's trick. And don't feel bad for wanting to trust others or wanting to give others the benefit of the doubt. Just remember to do your own research to equip yourself with what you need when there's a lack of information or sprinkles of misinformation in there, especially if the subject at hand is important to you. You're not a dope, even if you're a bit gullible. It probably just means you have a big heart or are passionate about something, which is better than having a heart of steel and an empty life, in my opinion. Is what I would say if I was just giving a potential solution to a problem someone asked me for, or if I was taking a look at Knuckles the Echidna, which I guess I am, so I guess that fits. I'm pretty
pretty sure no one was asking for something like this, but it was fun. Also, like I mentioned before, I think about this stuff a lot in almost every manner of life, so this is for those who might be a bit similar or who like to listen to obscure topics like this that involve one of their favorite mediums. If this was something that was up your alley and you want to see more, let YouTube know that you like to keep seeing what I put out. Also, I have an itch for self challenges and I like to make gameplay videos for fun, so check it all out to see if you're interested. If not, then I will see you next time. Take care of yourself and each other. Bye.